Hi everyone and welcome back to Learning Media Skills. Today we're going to be continuing our series on how to edit video using DaVinci Resolve. And uh, today we're going to take a look at how to navigate some windows. I know you're probably anxious to start editing your project, but it's I think important to take a moment and and learn how to find all of the windows that uh, will be helpful to you when you're doing your editing. Let's open up our project, Better to Die Walking. And we left off with uh, importing the interview to our edit page. Now, before we get into our lesson today, I want to show you one more thing in regards to importing media. You may have noticed last time I didn't bring in any music to our project. And the reason was I have a large folder of sorted music on one of my hard drives. Let's just open that up here. It's called Sorted Music. And uh, as I open this folder up on my hard drive, you'll see that I have sorted music into folders using genre and mood and that type of thing so that when I go to start a project, I don't have to sort through all of my music every time. I can simply bring in this folder. And that's what I wanted to show you. If you happen to get a hard drive from a client and somebody has already organized all of the media into folders on that hard drive, then there's a very clever way, a very convenient way of bringing in just the folder, dragging and dropping the whole folder into your project. And DaVinci will create bins with the same names of the folders that were on your hard drive. So somebody may have nicely organized your whole project for you and all you have to do is bring in one folder and DaVinci creates all the bins that uh, relate to the folders on your hard drive. So let's show you that with our sorted music. Now the trick to doing this is to drop this folder from your hard drive in the right place. Uh, if I should just drag it down and uh, put it right here in the media pool over here, yes, it will bring in all of the music tracks, but it's not going to maintain the file hierarchy that I set up as I sorted out those music into their various folders. And even if I went and dropped it into the bin that I already created, the music bin, the same thing will happen. It'll bring in all the files, but it, it won't maintain the file structure that I have on my hard drive. The only way to maintain the folders within the folders is to bring it down here into this space in this side panel. Can't do it over here. You have to do it in this side panel. Just uh, drag and drop that folder, release it, and it will start its transfer. And now the sorted music uh, folder from my hard drive is imported into the project along with all of the folders that I have sorted this into. And we can open up any one of these and we've got our audio. I want some music that uh, inspires hope. Well, here's all my tracks. So that's a good tip, an easy way of uh, bringing in your music, sort them first, and every time you start a project, just bring in the folder from your hard drive. All right, well, let's move on to our lesson for today, and that is learning all about our windows and how to navigate through our windows, how to have the right windows open for the particular task that you're working on as you do your edit. The first thing that I might point out is that if you happen to have two monitors connected to your system, to your computer, the first thing I would recommend that you do is go up to the menu item at the top of the screen that says Workspace, go down to dual screen and turn that on. Because when you do that, you have so much more real estate for DaVinci to populate. It will make finding the windows that you need to do your edit that much easier as you spread out all of the options across the real estate of two screens. And just under the dual screen option, you can also choose which monitor you want to be your prime display monitor that's where your timeline is going to be basically what we see right now on the screen that we're recording uh, because we have that one checked if we switched this then um, the two monitors would switch places and now we see all of our bin the music that we just sorted uh, the hope uh, music now 
showing up. Let's go to our master and we see all of our bins that we started uh, in our last lesson showing up. So that's how you can switch monitors. Now just one more thing I wanted to show you here and that is how you can turn on the primary monitor to be the full screen and uh, play your video that way and see your output uh, on the full screen. And this is very helpful, especially if you have three monitors connected to your system. You can have one of the monitors displaying the full screen output. And to get out of that, just hit Escape. All right, uh, as we continue our lesson here, I'm going to change this back so that everything is on one screen. And this is how many people will probably be doing their edit, especially as they first start working with video. And uh, so let's see how we can work with DaVinci just using one monitor. First of all, let's go up to this uh, left-hand top panel. And let's open up one of our bins here. Let's maybe open up B-roll. And uh, here we can see all of our thumbs. And let's notice how we can open this window up. If you are at the point where you're really searching for clips and you may want to see this panel have more real estate, the first thing that you can do is hide this side panel that shows a list of your bins by just clicking on this little icon up here. And now your media clips are spread out over a larger area. And you can change the size of these thumbnails with this slider up here. If you like to see your thumbnails larger, you can even go so that there's just one thumb and then you just scroll down to search for that media that you're looking for. And if you'd like to see this extend down even further, just uh, click on this first icon at the top there. And now it does shrink up your timeline, but it does give you uh, a, an opportunity to see more clips at once. Now, usually I don't have the thumbnails that large, and uh, so we can be looking at something like this and still quite easily go through and find the clip that we're looking for. But then you might want to change to another bin, and so what you do is just go back here to reveal your bins again. And then, once you reach a point where you are working more with your timeline and you want to expand that area out, remember the icon to change is right up here, and now you've got more room on your timeline to work with. Now, while we still have our media pool open here, showing our B-roll clips, let's take a look at some other ways that these can be displayed. Um, up here, you have some options where you can show not only the thumbnail, but also some metadata about the clip itself. And we can also see them just as a text. If you want to see more information, more metadata about the media itself, notice that you can slide this slider across and find out all sorts of information about the media. And this will become more visible and useful once you get your second monitor and all of this media pool is over on your second monitor. But for now, if you just got the one screen, remember you'll have to slide this across if you want more information about your uh, clip itself. And you don't have to have all of this uh, metadata showing. You can go up to the top area here, right click, and choose which of this information that you want displayed as you scroll across. Like if you're not interested in the audio codec, you can shut that off. If you're not interested in seeing the, the starting time code, well, you can shut that off. And this opens up more space for you to see as you slide across or add other bits of information that you may find more helpful. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, you may look at this and say, oh, this isn't very helpful at all. Uh, it doesn't show any thumbnails. When would I ever use a text-based uh, view of my media? Well, I actually find it quite helpful when I'm looking for music. Let's go down to our sorted music, and let's go into, say, atmospheres. And here, because there's no thumbnail associated with audio files, there's no reason to display the thumb. And uh, here I can click through them a lot faster and uh, try and find the music that I'm looking for. And of course, if you know the name of your music, you can always do a search, type in that. So lots of options for your media pool.
Let's go back to our B-roll bin here and turn on thumbnails. So now, uh, if we want to have more room to work with our uh, play monitor and our record monitor, we can uh, just click on the next icon here, and that hides our media pool and opens up this area to work with. And um, right now we're only seeing one monitor, and it is showing us the source clip that we just clicked on, so it, we call it the source monitor. But if we click down here to our timeline, that one monitor is going to switch to the what we call the record monitor. You could call it the timeline viewing monitor as well, if that makes more sense to you. Now, if we want to see both the source monitor and the timeline monitor up here at the same time, and you're only using one screen, you need to go over to this icon here and click on it. And now we have our source clip over here and our timeline monitor showing up over here. And you can actually have both of these monitors open even when you're working with one screen and still have the media pool open. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. Uh, if you like to have the source monitor and the timeline monitor open at the same time, remember that option is up here with the little... Uh, let's notice that. We're kind of skipping across some things here, but let's, let's click on that. And notice that as you select a media clip, the metadata of that media clip is going to show up over here. So that's another way to see your metadata very easily. And uh, it's very handy to have this because a lot of times I'll want to know if the media that I have is actually just HD media or is it 4K media. And just by clicking on it, you can go over here and see, oh, it's 4K. 3840 times 2160. And so that's very helpful information to know when you're doing your edit because it lets you know just how much you can zoom into the uh, media uh, without losing resolution, if, especially if you're working with an HD project. If you've got 4K clips, you can really zoom into them and not lose any quality at all. So that's helpful to know that you can see that metadata there. But when you don't need to see that metadata, just click on it, it goes away, and then you have your two monitors to work with. All right, uh, let's go back over here and notice what uh, the next icon is. If you hold it, uh, hold your mouse down on it long enough, it tells you what it is. It's effects. And uh, so if you need to apply effects of any kind to your media, this is what you want to click on. And you'll notice in the little sidebar here, that you've got video transitions, audio transitions, you can create titles, you can generate um, color bars or even solid colors. There's uh, fusion effects that uh, you want to investigate, just a whole wide range of uh, effects that you can apply while you're doing your edit. And in the sample edit that we'll do in this series, we'll actually go after some of these and show you how to apply these effects. All right, what's up next? Okay, this is uh, some more metadata that relates to what's happening on your timeline. And uh, so you can see where clips have been placed on the timeline. You can see what tracks you have available. You can check out any markers that you may have applied. As you're doing your edit, you might want to place a marker here and there so it reminds you to come back to that point. And these would show up here. Then the last one is your sound library. DaVinci actually gives you an opportunity to take advantage of their sound effects library, and you can also upload third-party sound effects uh, to this library here. Then when you're searching for some sound effects, just do a text-based search, and if you have that uh, already uploaded into your database, they'll show up here, and you can easily and quickly apply it to your edit. All right, uh, let's keep moving along here and notice uh, some of the options that are available over here. Quick export. Normally, when you're finished your edit, your project, and you want to export uh, for distribution, you would go down here and use this whole page here. Uh, and this is where you find most of the export options. But if you need to do a quick export, well, there are some quick export options there that you can investigate. 
This option turns on your audio mixer meters so that when you play a clip or when you're doing your edit and you've got music and uh, different uh, maybe voiceover tracks, you can make sure that uh, the levels of each of those tracks are at the right place. And we'll talk more about that uh, as we get into our edit. We've already taken a look at uh, the metadata option here. Our last option up here is your inspector. And you'll find that you'll want to use this a lot. Uh, you may find that your priority to have this panel open is greater than your priority to have two monitors, your source monitor and your timeline monitor. Because uh, once you get used to it, it's actually quite easy to work with just the one monitor. Just double click on any one of these uh, source media and the monitor turns into your source monitor. Click down here in your timeline, it goes back to your timeline monitor. So you can, you can easily go in, um, view your clip, get your in and out points, and drag that down to your, your timeline. Maybe before we close off this lesson, we can take a look at this side panel here that is uh, in your timeline. This shows your video tracks and your audio tracks. You might see a heavy line here and you can bring this up and down to show more video tracks or more audio tracks, but it also separates your video tracks from your audio tracks. Things you can do here, well, you can rename a video track. Let's call this um, interview track. And that's helpful to have them renamed like that. You can lock a track. Let's also lock the audio track of that clip. And now, with both of these tracks locked, there's nothing that I can do to uh, affect these tracks. I can try and do a delete, um, a ripple delete, any kind of... Uh, if I was to drag and drop some media down, well, I wouldn't be able to overwrite it because that track is locked. Let's unlock these. The next option is the audio track selector. This also is, it's kind of like the lock, but it does allow you to still make adjustments to the uh, track itself. We'll talk more about that. And then you can disable a video track. Let's say you're working with uh, three or four layers of 8K video and it's kind of, uh, your, your computer is struggling. Well, you can mute uh, some of the tracks uh, to make it easier to play the track that you're working with. And it's the same with the uh, audio track. If uh, all you want to do is edit and listen to the music track, well, you can mute all of the other tracks except for your music track. Well, I think that does it for what I wanted to show you on how to navigate uh, the windows or panels, you might call them, of your edit page. And uh, hopefully you found uh, it helpful and uh, you'll be ready to roll. I think we're going to do one more orientation uh, lesson, and uh, that is how to work with keyboard shortcuts. So we'll see you next time here at Learning Media Skills, where we'll talk about keyboard shortcuts for DaVinci Resolve. We'll see you then. So long for now.